Il Siragusano will be releasing on May 23rd. I have been saving up my precious randoms for this very moment. This is that one time of the year where I got to spend my savings, but do please uh, spend your money wisely. It might seem like this video is a summary of the JP livestream, but I will mainly focus on the Il Siracusano event. In this video, I will go over the limited manner, the new operators, and the enemies with tips on how to defeat them as well as some additional things coming to this event. Il Siracusano takes place in Siracusa, the Arknights version of Italy. Unlike our Italy where they have good food and home to the prancing horse, the entire country is controlled by the Mafia, and the Texas family is a very well-known Mafia in Siracusa. In this event, Texas returns to Siracusa traveling through the city of Volsini, which you can explore as you progress through the story, just like in Stultifera Navis. Clearing all the stages of this event will give you 41 OP. As usual, some stages also drops tier 3 materials at a higher rate, which are alloys, cutting fluid, and Orira cluster, which you should farm as much as you can. Moving on to the Limited Banner, because honestly, we mainly want the operators from this event. The Limited Banner features Luna Cup, Penance, and the Limited Operator, Texas the Omertosa. The non-limited operator from this banner will be added on to the Standard Banner, while Texas Altar will come back in another Limited event sometime in the future. For every pull you do on this banner, you earn a token which you can use to spark other Limited Operators in the store. There are three other limited operators who will receive a higher drop rate compared to other 6 star operators which are Neural the Radiant Knight, Scotty, the Corrupting Heart, and Rosmontis. There is also W but she does not receive a rate up but you can still spark her alongside the aforementioned operators. What if for some reason you decided to skip Texas Altar and decided to spark one of the limited operators? Assuming you have 300 tokens, NTR gives you the best bang for your buck. Her kit allows for different types of strategy to be played, which could be useful in integrated strategies. Nor Alter can solo a lane, act as a heli drop, and an incredible boss killer because true damage is king. One last thing about the banner, if you are free to play, don't worry. This banner gives you a free 10 pull ticket and you get one free single pull every day for the duration of this banner, which is 2 weeks. That's a total of 24 pulls. Il Siracusano brought us 6 new operators, 2 of which are available on the Red Certificate store. Let's go over them briefly. The first Red Certificate operator is Quartz, a 4 star Crusher Guard, a new archetype that seems like a variation of the Centurion Guard, but the stats suggest that they are built to maximize damage with very little regard to defensive capability. Boasting a boatload of attack and HP, Quartz's main use is dealing large amounts of physical damage with a chance of stun. Considering that Quartz is just a 4 star, the damage she delivers is quite insane. The next red certificate operator is… what the fuck, how do you say that? Ganipalat. A single target caster who levitates enemies and can also deal AoE damage. Additionally, her talent applies Arts Fragility to aerial targets, which increases the Arts damage they take. Since levitated enemies count as aerial targets, her skill too synergizes very well with her talent. For your Welfare Operator, we get Vigil, a 6-star Tactician Vanguard, and you can buy him from the event store using the event currency. His kit is centered around the Wolf Pack, and when enemies are blocked by it, both Vigil and his 3-headed dog ignores 200 defense at Elite 2 Pot 5. His skill 1 is a generic DP generation skill. Skill 2 gives 2 DP and the next attack by the wolf pack deals 200% damage and recovers 20% HP at mastery 3. If the wolf pack kills an enemy, you get 1 DP. For skill 3, Vigil and the wolf pack's attack deal 3 hits, and when they attack a blocked enemy, they deal arch damage equal to 50% of Vigil's attack. Overall, Vigil's kit is more DPS oriented and quite gimmicky for a vanguard, but still offers a decent amount of DP. Skill 2 might be a little problematic if there are not many enemies around, which in that case, you should bring a second vanguard. Moving on to the operators that are part of the Chop the Horns banner. Actually, the name changed to Through a Path of Briars, but you've seen that earlier in the video, so I'll let you continue. First is Luna Cup, a 5 star Dead Eye Sniper. When her skills are not active, she gains camouflage and cannot be targeted by enemies. Luna Cup also gains camouflage by killing enemies while her skill 2 is active. So in a nutshell, 
Luna Cup is basically an infinite camouflage generator. The next operator on this banner is Penance, a 6-star juggernaut defender. She has a barrier, similar to Mudrock, that scales off her max HP. When killing an enemy, Penance gains a barrier equal to 6% of her max HP, and it caps off when her barrier reaches 300% of her max HP. Additionally, when attacked while her barrier is up, Penance returns the damage in the form of Arch Damage back to the enemy equal to half of her attack, which is very similar to Hoshiguma's skill too. Penance's first skill has a normal and a charge state. The charge state deals massive physical damage and stun the enemies for a brief period. With skill 2, Penance receives a shelter effect while dealing constant arch damage to enemies around her. Her barrier also gets stronger while this skill is active. Skill 3 immediately provides Penance with a barrier up to 130% of her HP. She also gets a massive attack buff but increases her attack interval by 0.9 seconds. Despite the slow attack though, each bonk with her hammer hits like a truck. And now for the star of this event. Texas the Omertosa. She brings the fast redeploy archetype to a whole new level since Phantom with some very cracked stats. Texalter's first talent gives her an attack buff while her skill is active and causes her to reactivate her equipped skill when defeating an enemy for the first time. Her second talent increases her attack speed and reduces all damage taken. As a fast redeploy specialist, all of Texalter's skills are passively activated as soon as she is deployed. Skill 1 silences the enemies and constantly deals arch damage. Texalter's second skill deals instant arch damage and debuffs the enemy's resistance by a lot. The skill also causes her attacks to hit twice and deals arch damage, and anyone standing in her way gets absolutely shredded thanks to that debuff. Finally, skill 3 deals arch damage two times and stuns nearby enemies. Then she proceeds to use her flagship skill, Sword Rain. Except this time, it's on steroids. So yeah, that is all the new operators coming to this event. And I will be 100% rolling on this banner until I get at least one copy of Texalter. She is no doubt the most broken fast redeploy I've ever seen so far. And I wonder what kind of meta gaming will pop up in the future using Texas Alter. Before we move on to the enemies, I want you to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video so far. It helps the video spread to other people so they can see it too. Thank you. With great operators comes equally powerful and annoying enemies. Before we get into each individual enemy unit, there is one other thing you need to know. The game mechanic in Il Siracusano is centered around the Vendetta meter. This Vendetta meter will increase at a constant rate. I'm not sure how much, but the wiki just says 3 per second. 3 what? You can't just say 3! When a certain enemy or civilian is defeated, yes, there are civilians in this event, we'll get to that later, they will increase the meter by varying amounts. When the meter is full at 500 units, the game enters a state known as Moment of Reckoning, where for 35 seconds, enemies will have their attack and defense increased by 20% and 15% respectively, and a special enemy will spawn. Additionally, some enemies gain special abilities during Moment of Reckoning, so you better watch out. I won't go through every single enemy, but just the ones that you need to be aware of. First, the Familia casters increase the rate of the Vendetta meter. They have low defense, making them vulnerable to physical damage. And the way I like to deal with these types of enemies is to show your range superiority with snipers. Or artillery if you're really bloodthirsty. The Capo Regime increases the Vendetta meter when an enemy dies within 1.8 tiles around them, indicated by a purple ring. Ideally, you want to kill these guys when they are alone, but understandably, that is not always possible. So make sure you have enough healing in your squad for when the moment of reckoning happens. The next enemy is the Familia Hitman, and they may as well be the most annoying enemy in this event. They only spawn during moment of reckoning, and on top of the buff they receive, they gain further 15% attack and defense, as well as 50 attack speed. The buff also stacks up to 5 times. Oh, did I mention that he is invisible? Well, now you know. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is to not trigger the moment of reckoning too many times, because these guys are very tough, and without a debuff, your best shot is to use arch damage to kill them. Next is Padre Agenir, and he increases the Vendetta generation rate simply by just existing. 
When he spawns, Padre Engineer has 10 shots, which permanently lowers your operator's defense by 300. During moment of reckoning, Padre's range becomes global. You can tank these shots, but it's very risky without a strong defender. It's better if you kill him as fast as possible with a fast redeploy operator, which makes Tech Salter an ideal operator to fight Padre thanks to her crazy stats. Interestingly, when Padre is buffed, he lost all of his resistance and since Tech Salter deals arch damage, Padre would not stand a chance. Earlier I mentioned there are civilians. These guys don't cost you life points when they kill, but try your best to not get them killed because they keep the vendetta meter low. That is easier said than done because these guys are very, very squishy. This affects tax based on the number of civilians are present in the field, so the more the better. Also, there's a car with a very high HP attack and defense. When destroyed while being blocked, the car ejects 3 mafiosos in order to overwhelm your operators, especially your defenders. Fortunately, the car and its elite counterpart, the limo, has very low resistance making it vulnerable to arch damage. Any caster should work, but I think you'd have the most fun using Kobe against it. And finally, we have the boss, Zaro, and his stats looks more like a tank than a wolf. While Zaro is present, the rate at which the Vendetta fills up increases. He also takes 30% less physical and arch damage during the first phase. Zaro also has three special abilities. The first one is Fear of Bloodshed, which applies a fear debuff to three friendly units or civilians, prioritizing the latter, which caused them to lose an increasing amount of HP proportional to their max HP. The debuff also reduces attack speed by 70, and anyone with this debuff cannot be manually retreated. The last two effect though only applies to your operators. The second special ability is Ancient Deterrent. When Zaro's HP reaches zero for the first time, he will revive himself to full HP for over 40 seconds, during which he's invulnerable and has an aura that reduces attack speed by 50 to any operator around him. The third special ability is a Howl that when Zaro uses, increases the Vendetta meter by a lot. He only uses it outside of Moment of Reckoning and has a cooldown of 40 seconds. During his second phase, Zaro can't use the Fear of Bloodshed anymore, he does not take reduced damage, and he is vulnerable to stun. But his attack increases by 50%, hits twice, and can attack range operators too. A strong defender with two medics can withstand his second phase attack as long as he's not too close to your range operators. After looking at several IS-10 clears, guards and casters are quite commonly used against Zaro, and arch damage seems to work really well. Don't forget to maximize the stun effect during his second phase to buy you some more time if needed. Zaro is a tough boy, but with the correct strategy, he is not that big of a problem. To conclude this video, I want to include some other miscellaneous stuff that comes with this update. First, Passenger, Rosmontis, Sora, NTR, and Honeyberry gets a new skin in the Epoch lineup. Fashion Review is back featuring 52 skin reruns, and if you're buying all 52 skins, you are one crazy mad lad. IS3 will also be releasing on the same day, featuring alternate timelines where Terra is experiencing the 2012 movie but with the sea literally coming to life. There will be lots of new modules added for Pioneer Vanguards and Single Target Medics. Tech Salter and Luna Cup will also receive their module on release day, and a second module for Hoshiguma, Schwartz, Dusk, and Angelina. Last but not least, Alter Operators will be able to coexist with their OG versions, meaning skin vouchers and Alter Rewards will soon be removed. So that is everything you need to know about Il Sirukuzano. I will share my gacha result in a community post when this event has started, and you can share yours there as well. If you have any questions regarding this event or if I miss anything, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!